What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you. And today I wanna to talk about one of the coolest features on the Sony zv e 10 and that is the ability to be able to use it as a USB webcam. And I know what you're gonna be thinking, you're gonna be saying, well, you've been able to do this for a long time with Sony and pretty much any of the top you know, camera brands over the last 18 months, they've all released software, you know, so you can use your mirrorless camera as a webcam. This was especially useful when things like the CamLink and even just basic Logitech cameras were absolutely through the roof in prices because of the global shortage of them and the, just the huge demand for everyone working from home. The problem was with these softwares is they were sort of all half-baked. Um, my Lumix G9 was like a prime example of it. So they already had a piece of software where you could use it as like a live view, which was fine for photography, but there was too much lag and latency for video. All they basically did was just remove all the stuff that you would have, you know, all the things that you could see basically turned it like clean HDMI or clean USB. We could almost call it that, but there was lag and latency. And it was the same with a lot of other companies as well. Um, I tested out a Fujifilm camera and that actually worked pretty well, to be fair. But most of them were actually resolutions like even lower than 720p. Still look better than most webcams, but just with everything that was going on, all of the, you know, all of the problems you could have had, you know, you could have made it work, but it's not really what you want from your high-end camera, is it? Especially when you couldn't, you couldn't find... You couldn't find these. These little things were a godsend when they came out, weren't they? But what makes the ZV-E10 different, and the ZV-1 also features this, is that you can use it as a UVC USB webcam, okay? So you don't need any additional software. Obviously, you're going to need to load it up in Teams or OBS, but you don't need that sort of driver or, um, you know, different program in between. So it works perfectly fine on Windows that we're using right now, on a Mac, and I've also tested it out on a Chromebook at work, and it works Brilliant. Now it is still limited to 720p at 30 frames per second, but that still looks very decent, you know, on Teams and on Zoom. I've actually used it during the week and everyone commented on how nice the camera was looking versus, you know, web cameras that they had. It's not going to be for content creation. Right now we're coming through at 4K into an Elgato 4K 60 Pro Mark II, you know, that's not going to have that detail and picture quality, but I still think it's a fantastic feature. So I'm going to show you how you set it up in a minute. Super easy, super easy how to do that. And then we're going to do some comparisons as well. So we're going to compare it to a Logitech C920 at 1080p, um, a Logitech Brio at 4K. Don't like the Brio. Brio is pretty trash. Don't buy Brio. Um, and then also we're going to compare it to an A6400, not running with the CamLink though. We'll run it with the cheap £10. You can get these. I think I paid £4 for this one. USB capture card thingy is but anyway let's show you how to set that all up it is super easy to use this as a usb webcam so the first thing you need to do is this button up on the top here this changes you between photo movie and s and q setting you essentially just need to make sure that's on movie then you just hit your menu button on the back up here and it is on the first page of the movie section you just go down to usb streaming press that and then all you need to do is plug in a USB-C cable. I would recommend getting a longer one because the included one's really short. And there you go, boom, straight away. Obviously, I did have to add the device in OBS beforehand, but that is it. No software required. So setting all this up was an absolute nightmare. The Logitech C920 does keep uh, disconnecting. Um, I'm just really hitting the USB controllers hard, I think, quite a bit at the moment. Also wanted to do some microphone tests of all of these is spanking it a bit much audio interface everything it's just going crazy and um, it's probably annoying you seeing so many of me so if you want to just focus on one for audio um, for watching it in sync focus on the top left hand corner um, that is the Sony ZV-E10 with the 18 to 105 coming through at 720p but I've scaled it up to 1080p so I've stretched out the image a little bit and it looks really decent for Something that's just a free feature, just a feature on there that doesn't require any external equipment other than a USB cable. You just need to buy a longer USB cable because the other one's too short. We're at shutter speed 1 and 50, F4, slightly underexposed, ISO at 250. Now, up in the top right-hand corner over here, this guy, this is the Sony A6400 with the Viltrox 23mm at F1.4. Um, I've got auto white balance on both the cameras. I look a little bit more sort of saturated from the wheel trucks because that lens does it. I normally have to mess around with the picture profile a little bit, but that's at shutter speed 1 and 50, F4 ISO 250. 
does a good job. That's just going for a cheap capture card. But remember, that's sort of, I've set the camera so it's at 4K and then it's outputting at 1080p. So it is downsampling, you know, and I think it's a 6K sensor in total that it's doing all that downsampling on. So it does look very nice. You can see the improvement between the two just from spending cheap money. I would still recommend that you spend more money and get yourself a cam link. Now in the bottom, the bottom two is the webcams. And webcams struggle in my environment. As you can see, I've got the light, I've got the window open there. Okay. I've also got the window open over there, like the curtains, got all that. We've got some light. I've got a reflector light bouncing light off behind me. I've got a Falcon Eyes RX 18TD above me. So that's a big softbox light. And then over to my left, I've actually got a newer 2A8 video light. It sells for about hundred pounds. It's basically the same size as the key light. Okay. So I've got one of those. So there's lights everywhere. There's loads of light. And the only thing I haven't got is the light turned on above me, but they struggle. Okay, that's why I just don't recommend webcams unless you've just got such a well naturally lit room. So the C920 struggles the most. I can't really tweak the settings up that much more. It's struggling because it's still not masses of light. I don't want loads of light around me, but it struggles a bit. But it's a £60 webcam. So we're not really going to make any complaints about the C920. The problem is if I tweak it anymore, I would like the image to be a little bit more lit. But as soon as I do that, you start to see all this light where all the lights in my face and stuff so it's um yeah it's difficult getting that one going now that one i can't really complain about too much now over in the bottom right hand corner is the brio and my lua lct 440 pure looks very nice me not as much i mean this camera is really 160 to a 200 pound web camera okay this is you know the brio that's how much it costs. It was for 125 on Amazon the other day. I actually got it secondhand for 65 pounds off eBay. I don't know how I managed to win it for that price. So I thought I would pick one up and it does an okay job. The problem is, is I've heavily changed the Brio here. Okay. Like I have to customize so many settings. Your skin is like pink on it. It comes, it's still coming through. I've massively turned the saturation down, tweaked with the white balance, you know, and I've seen lots of other people as well complain about the brio when it comes to skin tones now that's all right if you can change the settings and make it look a little bit nicer but if you were using some form of web chat app or something that didn't allow you or didn't apply the settings that you changed to the camera then this is where it can look quite naff and honestly i just think even though i said the a5100 in my last video does have a few issues with waxy skin and stuff like that that you need to work around you know if you shop around that and that I paid just under £250 for because that doesn't cost much at all. But I think I paid £235 for this camera with a kit lens. So, you know, it's just going to look a lot nicer on the A5100. But back to the ZV-10 anyway. Um, I think it looks good. I haven't got the white balance quite nailed. I'm sure I've probably got it nailed in the other part of the video. But I wanted to leave it sort of, you know, a few things on auto because that's probably what you're going to do. Um, and as a free feature, like I said, it looks great. It looks great for what it is. And as you can see on the A6400, minus the fact that the skin tones are a little bit different, you can see, you know, how much more you can improve it just spending that much money. And then when we go back to face cam in a minute, you can see how much you improve it just by using a quality device as well. But finally, I want to do some microphone tests. I haven't been able to get the A6400 working, so I do apologize about that, but I wanted to do some microphone tests of the other three so you can hear them all out. So right now, this is just a quick audio test of the Sony ZV-E10 camera. Um, this is the built-in microphone, the free mic array, um, just coming straight through into the computer. So this is what you could expect if you weren't using an external microphone um, in a large room. This is a very large room, actually, when you count the open plan lounge. That it attaches to. Next up then we just have an audio test of the Logitech C920. I found this microphone out of all of them to be the most sensitive and I really did have to turn the gain down in Windows. It was picking up way too much little hums and buzzes from around my desk and just general house noises when I was testing with it the other day. This is going to be fine if you're using any web conferencing that uses noise suppression or you know if you were going to be using this through OBS and you were using this built-in microphone I would recommend using a noise gate with it and I recommend it for all the microphones that we're testing today. And finally, we have the Logitech Brio. It's actually got a pretty decent uh, microphone in it for a webcam. Um, I know I've trashed it for some other things where it's video quality and stuff. And to be fair, in low light, it does very well 
for a webcam. Um, that's one thing I noticed from my initial testings, but the two micro eight is fine. Would probably be perfectly fine if maybe you were gonna be using this in a small meeting room with three or four people. I would still recommend getting your own microphone. I mean, I could say that for every one of these tests, but yeah, this is just a quick sound test of the Logitech Brio. Now, if I'm all honest, you're not going to be using the built-in microphone on the ZVE-10 or even the A6400 um, if I get that working. I think I was running into USB bandwidth issues because, you know, if you spent that much money on a camera, the chances are you've got an external microphone. But actually, from my testings with the ZVE-10, there was literally no latency on the audio coming through from the camera, you know, into OBS, into Teams and stuff like that. There hasn't been any latency issues you would notice. That's what you're going to get with this and that you know, in the camera going through Teams, there's probably going to be, you know, some latency and some mismatch there. So that's where I'd recommend, you know, that's the great thing that they've got microphone inputs. You could have a little lapel mic clipped onto you, or you can use something like a shotgun microphone, even though this can be used as a USB microphone. This microphone can do freaking everything. It's the video mic NTG. You know, you could either have it mounted up just out of frame or like I normally do when I take this to work, so I just have it on the desk just in front of me on a little you know, stand just pointing up and everyone comments how clean and how nice my audio always sounds, which is what you want. You want to be, you want to be as a techie, you want to be the one with the fanciest looking Zoom and Teams image. And even at 720p, this thing looks fantastic. If you were going to be doing it all the time, I would still recommend you get this little puppy. That's going to get the most out of your camera. You know, the 4K60 Pro Mark II and this same image quality when it comes to using the camera. Um, you know, I don't really find a difference there. Obviously, the 4K60 Pro can do higher frame rates, but the camera can't do that anyway. These, you know, yeah, I'd still pick one up if you can't afford this straight away. And it's very difficult, you know. This is 10 times the price, but I do believe it's 10 times the product. You know, it's the subtle differences, okay? Webcams, don't like them. I'm just waffling at the end here. You know, like I said earlier, I would rather get an A5100 then recommend you buy this piece of crap right here. Anyway, that's it for me today. I'll stop trashing the Brio. Um, I'll stop waffling on. If you like the video, make sure you leave a like. If you dislike the video, feel free to leave a dislike. I do like constructive criticism as well as, you know, a big thumbs up. And if you really liked it, make sure you subscribe and I'll, and I'll be back with some more content very soon.